Good morning. It is May the 11th. Um, it is a fantastic day. And how do you like the way that it went? Like almost up to 100 last week. And now we're in like the lower ends of the 80s as a high. You know, so we're talking about a 20 degree difference in a span of, I don't know, a week. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of times we say something like this. You know, I, 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 I want, I want a wonderful life. I want to enjoy my life. I, I want, I want something more from life. And uh, I just wanted to say this real quick. You already have a wonderful life. You just have to slow down and enjoy uh, where you are now. Oftentimes we think, if I can get past this hump, then I'll be happy. If I can get this, if I can get this job, if I can do this, if I can do this, if I. Check it out. If if you're not happy in life now, nothing in the future is ever going to change that. Happiness is not dependent on where you are in the life in your life. So what I really want you to get across from, from this before I even get going on what I'm talking about here is slow down. Slow down. Just just don't get in that rush of I got it. Slow down and learn to enjoy it. Learn to learn to appreciate the little things. Enjoy where you are when you're there. You know, uh, sometimes we get so focused on, on what could change, what could be better, what could this, that, and the other thing. And we forget to just stop and say, you know, this is where I am now. You know, I, I have this problem a lot when I'm going to sleep. Um, you know, I, I stay so busy during the day and then it's time to go to sleep and I think of all the things that I could be doing rather than sleeping. And I don't like sleep, so it's like, there's a kind of a double whammy there. I have to do something every day that I don't like doing. Um, but it's one of those things. And so what I what I want to talk about today that was just the the preamble. Uh, what I want to talk about is from Galatians chapter six, um, verses one and two. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Now the part that I want to focus on um, is, is actually just like two real quick. Uh, uh, phrases there, okay? The first one, you who are spiritual should restore him. And then the second one, bear one another's burdens. The idea of restoring each other and, and bearing one another, helping each other. Um, this is kind of a big theme in the Bible that nobody was really meant to do life alone, and the church wasn't meant to be alone. Uh, in fact, in 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about being kicked out of the church as being um, given up to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. So I think in Paul's eyes, um, being out of the church was just a big, uh, a big problem. And I don't think that's just for the sake of um, what Jesus said when he said, you know, if you bind uh, something on earth, it will be bound, will have been bound in, in heaven. The idea of uh, as we uh, bring church discipline that, that Jesus is with us when we do it correctly, that kind of stuff, um, where two or more of you are gathered when you're bringing in church discipline, um, there I am also. Uh, uh, though, uh, yes, th those things absolutely, but um, what I'm what I when I want to get here is there, there's just a lot of different really really good things here that I'm trying to I'm trying to keep this short though I, I have a tendency to ramble. Um, what I'm let me let me let me go back. No man is an island. You know, uh, a lot of times we think I don't need other people. Or somehow we try and live a fulfilled life on our own, and that's just not really something that's that's possible. You will never make it alone for forever. You'll be you'll be okay with it at first, and even sometimes it'll seem like a blessing. Hey, I don't have to put up with people, but over time, eventually, it'll start eating away at you, and it'll make you really um, depressed, and it'll really change you. Uh, don't get used to spending your life by yourself and for yourself, especially in a situation like this. I mean, never have people been so validated in the idea of, validated in the idea of staying by yourself, not talking to anybody. You know, and now we have an excuse for not connecting with other people, and that's, that's not great. Um, just, if you think you should social distance and stuff that, that's great, that's awesome. But the thing is, make sure that you're, let me put it like this. When you call people on the phone, that, that actually you can social distance and talk to people on the phone. Like you don't have, just because you're social, social distancing doesn't mean you have to um, remain um, uh, separate. And I think that another thing about what Paul was saying about 
how being outside of the church brings destruction of the flesh is more of a practical note. Um, when we have each other, life is better. When we have each other, we have something to protect us against falling away, against um, getting stuck and getting sucked up into sin. So I, I think that there's a lot of really great applications there. Um, let me just check my notes real quick here. Um, there's a few things that I want you to watch out for as you're going through um, life, especially nowadays. Watch out for things like this. I don't need them. I I, I don't. I, I'm better off without them. I don't need them in my life. Um, another thing to watch out for, for I'm better off. Uh, another thing, uh, well, I think you get the point. The, the moral of the story being, if you're starting to get comfortable now in being isolated, if you're starting to get comfortable in being separate, that's that should be a huge red flag because it's going to be fine now. But wait a week or two or three or four, eventually it's going to hit really hard. Depression and burnout and all kinds of different things is not going to be good. We as people were not meant to live life alone. And there's a lot of studies that have been, that have been done about, you know, not, not being alone. So I, I want to encourage you, however long, um, uh, you know, things last, problems last, those kinds of things, make sure that you are connecting with other people. Um, you know, if, if you do have the benefit of, of living in a house with other people, um, make sure to take time to connect with them, talk with them, uh, play games with them, uh, whatever. Just connect with, with other humans. Um, if you do not live in a house with other people, then maybe think about um, Facebook has the Messenger app, and you can do FaceTime through that. If you have an iPhone, you can do FaceTime through that. Um, you can do uh, texting. You can do calling. Um, if you don't have access to any of those things, um, you know, there are other ways to, to, to do stuff. Uh, I mean, maybe even just find a neighbor and you guys can social distance contact. You know, like, for instance, this is just a, a hypothetical situation. You could both put on gloves and a mask and sit out on the front porch and one of you could sit, sit like, seven, six feet away over there and I'll sit over here, you know, and you can still talk. What I'm getting at here is find a way to not live life all about you, all for you. That's just not a great, that's not a great place to be in. It'll be really, really comfortable now, and that's not good. Um, and it's very impersonal. It's very self-focused. Right now, it might seem innocent enough, but fast forward a year or so, and you might not like where you're at. So I, I guess that's really what I want to. What my main point is there: uh, bear one another's burdens and restore restore each other. The idea of being there for each other. We were not meant to live life by ourselves. Paul had this idea of us being together in life. God had this idea of us being together in life. Jesus had, I mean, if you see this repeated over and over throughout the whole Bible, we were definitely meant to be, um, to be together. So I, I hope that you guys have a great rest of the day. And I believe uh, Pastor Randy's going to have a, um, a, the Devo for tomorrow. So you guys have a great rest of the day, and I will see you on the flip side.